Hi there, let's get to it. Trimming is one of the most powerful tools an editor can use. After the rough cut's been completed, you now begin the process of sculpting your story. So this is where you start to consider things like tone, mood. This is where you really get to manipulate your footage and of course the audience. So I'm going to create a dedicated timeline. And this time, instead of randomly throwing down clips, I'm going to find a sequence that was shot from several angles and try to put it together on my timeline. And I could decide, yes, in and out. I could pretty much start off using this as a master and then move on to the cutaways. So I've got this bit where she's walking up and sitting across from him and this correlates to this motion here. So I can drag and drop this on top of the video. If I click between the edits, you can see that I have a symbol indicating that I'm now selecting both sides of the cut and I'm rolling both clips. In the top right corner, I'm seeing a visual representation of the last frame of the preceding clip and the first frame of the next clip. So what does it mean for this particular scene? The actress takes a lot more time putting down the drinks and sitting down in the wide shot than she does in the close-up. In the close-up, it looks like it happens almost instantaneously. As soon as she walks up, she sits down and that's when he notices her. I'm going to try to make this shot look like she immediately sat down. So I'm just going to do something like that. So if I try to play it back now, that feels a lot better. The next tool is also available when your trim edit mode is activated, and that will be the slip mode. And what happens is, when I hover over a clip, I get this icon that looks like two arrows pointing in either direction on a clip. When I click this clip, these white lines appear everywhere, and what's actually happening is these white lines are representing the duration of the entire clip as captured. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, so that's control minus. So there it is, you can see the end of that outline, and if I pull it, you can see the entire clip. The duration of the clip itself is not changing. Its position on the timeline is not changing. All that's changing is which section of the clip throughout its duration is currently being used. Whenever I have my slip tool activated, I can see at the top the first frame of the clip that I'm rotating, the last frame of this clip, and at the bottom, I can see the last frame before the cut and the first frame after the cut. So in that case, I'll go back to faking her sitting down and I'm going to play it through again. So you can see there's a continuity error. He looks down and he smiles to himself. And then the next thing we see is she's standing up and he's looking straight at her. So I'll just go in here with the trim tool and just cut this out until I get something that's perhaps similar. He is looking down here, which is a better match. She's looking up, so that's not 100%. Maybe I can make this clip last longer. So here she's in front of him a little bit. So that's a much cleaner cut. The last tool we're going to look at is the slide tool. So let's say I want to advertise the name of the pub that we shot this in. I don't want to just drag and drop this onto the timeline because I'm going to be overwriting a whole heap of this footage. So this is where the insert tool is really effective. I'm going to click on insert clip and push everything else out of the way. That way I have a nice narrative got a shot of the name, cut to her walking in. The way to switch from slip and slide is really easy. You just go from the thumbnail of your video to the name of the video. So see how the symbol switches depending on where I am? Down here where it's the name, I'm just going to grab this clip and now you can see that I'm sliding across. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.